welcome back so we shall continue now uh, if you recall what we had learned in the last class in semiconductor devices is that we had learned about doping uh, things like fermi dirac distribution density of states all those things we are uh, clear we also had solved some very simple numerical of uh, p and n doping together right one is called minority one is called majority so we'll continue on the discussion with doping uh, temperature dependence of your carrier concentration uh, things like high doping effect okay and from there on we will try to move to uh, scattering mobility and other things uh, in the subsequent lectures okay so we'll uh, recall what we had last uh, where we had last stopped okay so we'll go to the slide or the page where we last finished in the last lecture and i'll bring that up here so you can see that uh, in the last class um, i told you that you know the the doping and uh, whatever you are doping that becomes the majority for example if you are doping silicon n type then you are doping uh, you know with phosphorus or arsenic so that's a donor and it's a majority suppose you are doping 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube that's your say n type doping density it's called majority and the minority carrier concentration can be found out by this simple formula it's the principle of mass action which is the product of p type and product of n type uh, the, the total number of electrons and total number of holes has to be constant in equilibrium which is equal to the square of the intrinsic area concentration so intrinsic area concentration is 1. you know 5 to 10 to the power 10 i told you right you know that we derived that so if n type concentration is 10 to the power 17 then your number of holes is actually 10 to the power 3 only almost okay so that is called minority so it's an n type semiconductor uh, this is a very simple way of actually doing uh, the finding out the electron and hole concentration now another very important thing will come now here is that uh, suppose you have a piece of semiconductor say silicon uh, you are putting some n type dopants you know nd and also you are putting some p type dopants in the whole thing okay you are putting some n type doping here also you are putting some p type doping in the hole so what will be the net concentration will it be electrons or will it be holes because you know an electron in a conduction band and a hole in the valence band if there is an electron here if there is a hole here they can recombine right they can recombine and they can release the energy right so how many electrons will be there how many holes will be there suppose i have put 10 to the power you know 17 doping of uh, your n type doping and suppose i have put you know 1.5 into 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube of uh, boron so it will give you p type <coughs> doping so of course uh, I told you that if I put 10 to the power 17 uh, donors, then I will get equal number of electrons. So, this also will become equal to electron. If I am giving so many of p-type doping or acceptor doping, then I will get this many of holes, right. So, how many of these will be electrons and how many, I mean, how many electrons and how many holes will eventually survive? Because many of them will recombine amongst each other, no, between each other. So, to find that, we have to understand a very important or we have to, you know, um, invoke a very important a condition which will be always valid in semiconductor physics and that is called uh, charge neutrality okay in equilibrium the total positive and negative charges have to cancel each other okay so the net ne negative and positive charge have to remain totally zero that is called charge neutrality so suppose i have a phosphorus atom i told you right it will give it has five electrons and then four electrons it bounce and one electron is free that goes away right when it donates an electron when a donor donates an electron it leaves behind a positively charged ionized core right so i told you that if we have nd if we have nd number of donors then after giving all the electrons and so n, n number of electrons will come which is equal to nd what remains behind is nd plus number of ionized donors which means suppose nd is equal to 10 to the power 16 i have added 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube of say phosphorus atoms i have it added so what will happen is that these are donors right they will, they will donate electrons so after they all donate electrons what remains behind what remains behind is 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube of ionized phosphorus atoms will remain i will call them ionized donor atoms right because they have given away the electrons so what remains is positively charged ion so this many positive charges remain because the ionized cores remain and also 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube of free electrons exist now of free electrons exist now because all the atoms phosphorus atoms have given away the electron the extra electron so you get uh, you know 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube of free electrons in the sample these are an electron is a negatively charged particle so you have 10 to the power minus 16 negative 10 to the power plus 16 positive which is the ionized charge core atoms ions and so the total charge is zero 
but electrons will be there because electrons are not recombining with the donor ions there are no holes here ok. So, essentially what it means is that N d plus number of positively charged ions will be there right positively charged ions will be there and then N number of negatively charged electrons will be there I mean electrons are negatively charged that we all know right I mean that is we all know. So, negatively charged electrons will be there and under charge neutrality it is 0. So, n will be equal to n d plus <coughs> ok. So, the total charge is 0 this many free electrons are there that can move and carry current these are immobile positive ions are there which have come because they have donated the electrons away. Similarly, if I have a p type material I give n a min n a of you know uh, acceptor ions uh, acceptor atoms then they will give the holes. So, p number of holes will be there which are positively charged right they are positively charged, but n a will give holes matlab they will take electrons. So, there it this many number of negatively charged ions are there right and equilibrium p will be equal to n a minus right. So, this is positively charged holes this is positively charged holes and this is negatively charged your ionized cores ok this is negatively charged ionized cores. Now, this is only for <coughs> this is only for p type material right this is only for p type doping right and this is only for n type material n type material the question is what we, what happens when we have both right. Suppose what I am trying to say is that I have given both electrons and holes no suppose I have given n d number of um, donors and n a number of uh, acceptors together then what will happen then the charge neutrality has to be written ok the charge neutrality condition has to be written first. What is the charge neutrality condition? The charge neutrality condition will say the total positive charge. What is the total positive charge? One is holes. Holes will be positively charged and N d plus sorry and N d plus this comes from this is holes which is positively charged and this is your ionized cores of the acceptors right ionized cores of acceptors which uh, sorry donors sorry ionized cores of donors because they have donated the electrons. So, that remains all remains is basically positively charged I told you that should be equal to the total negative charge which is n plus n a minus because this comes from the ionized acceptors ok this comes from ionized acceptors okay? and this is free electrons of course. So, what I can write is that I can say that total p plus n d plus should be equal to total electrons plus negatively charged ions ok. This is your charge neutrality condition and from this you find out everything if it is n type dope only then the p type doping is not there. So, this will not be there and this will not be there that is true and if your uh, electrons only p type doping is there then this will not be there and this will not be there right. So, that is basically it. So, now we know how to do it. So, let us see now I know that so I write the equation again p plus n d plus is equal to n plus n a minus, but I know that p n in equilibrium is this is all equilibrium I am talking about ok is equal to n i square right. So, what I know I know that p is equal to n i square by n why do not I substitute that back here ok I will substitute that back here. So, I can write this equation now as p can I can write as n i square by n plus n d plus ok plus n d plus equal to n plus n a minus. Of course, you know n d plus is equal to n d only because if you have given 10 to the power 16 say uh, per centimeter cube of phosphorus atoms as donors then 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube uh, of you know plus positively charged ionized donor will be there. So, instead of that n d plus n d minus I can just write it n d and n a this is the same number no. Uh, we are assuming 100 percent they are ionized. So, what I can write now here is I can multiply both sides by n. So, it will become n i square plus sorry plus n into n d equal to n square plus n into n a ok. So, what can I write here now? So, what I can write here now is that n square plus n n a minus n d plus uh, sorry not plus minus it will be minus n i square is equal to 0. So, does it look like x square plus a x plus b equal to 0 it is a quadratic equation. Uh, 
so let's see how we solve the quadratic equation so i have n square plus n n a minus n d plus sorry not plus minus minus n i square is equal to 0 so n will be equal to minus n a minus n d depends which is the larger here right plus minus the total number has to be positive so it cannot be uh, you know the negative it cannot be a negative number n cannot be negative but the reason i am keeping here plus minus is because this quantity may be negative you know you never know so anyways we will be equal to n a minus n d whole square plus 4 n i square by 2 that is your solution right so if you see the expression here n a minus n d is there if one of them is very large n a is very large then compared to n d then we can just you know suppose n a for example i am telling you a doping situation where i am doping both n and p type doping are coexisting okay that's why we are doing that if both n and p type doping do not coexist only one type doping is there then we don't care about it because then your n is equal to n d only right only when there are both types of doping this situation this equation is valid right i mean makes sense right so i suppose, suppose i am doping uh, holes 10 to the power uh, 17 per centimeter cube p, p type and suppose i am doping n type only 10 to the power say 15 per centimeter cube then na minus nd this equation here no this na minus nd or even here for example will be 10 to the power 17 minus 10 to the power 15 which is almost equal to 10 to the power 17 only it's like 100 minus 1 right so then you can neglect nd and then you can have a simplified expression for example then you will have n equal to minus na right uh, because it will be na only no there will be nothing there so plus uh, na minus this will be much smaller this will be 10 to the power 15 or 10 to the power uh, you know a square of 10 to the power 20 for example right this will be 10 to the power 20 4 into 10 to the power 20 approximately and this will be equal to how much this will be equal to 10 to the power 34 because na minus nb so this is negligible so it will only remain na here by 2 this is 0 so almost electrons will be 0 so holes will be equal to na which is equal to 10 to the power 17 that is easy right but if both electrons and holes are there then it uh, then you have to take into account this expression and if uh, you know your uh, uh, your doping is uh, low so that your this cannot be neglected then also you have to use this equation for example okay so it is important that we use the equation uh, in other words uh, this is a very universal equation which can give you the number of electrons and holes uh, for a semiconductor where both n and p type doping are coexisting okay that is one thing so the next thing we will learn today is that uh, you know I told you uh, that suppose I have only an n type semiconductor let us not make it both n type and p type suppose I have only n type semiconductor and the Fermi level is uh, here uh, you know the I, and you know the expression if you do not re remember you should remember the total number of electrons is given by n equal to nc exponential of ef minus ec by kt right. So ef minus ec is basically I keep telling you this spacing the negative of this spacing okay ef minus ec is the negative of this spacing and nc of course depends on you know effective mass like 2 pi m star <coughs> kt this is the Boltzmann constant by something like h square into 3 by 2 of course this depends on effective mass of the material and each material has a different effective mass for example gallium arsenide will have a different effective mass silicon will have a different effective mass germanium will have different effective mass so if effective masses are different then your nc also keeps differing that is one thing we should keep in mind. Uh, so this this expression comes from the you know Maxwell Boltzmann equation if you remember call it Maxwell Boltzmann approximation to Fermi Dirac and that is how we get it. it it takes into account both Fermi Dirac and its distribution as well as density of states. Uh, now what are we going to tell you uh, you know here is that suppose I take uh, uh, you know the donor ionization energy level is very close up here I told you right ED. Uh, when you add say you know if you take a silicon and I am telling, telling you that if I would say put phosphorus here then one electron is free that goes away no that is loosely bound that is why that is free and it goes away and that loosely bound coulombic energy which the electron overcomes and goes away to become free is called the donor ionization energy. A similar thing accepts, uh, also exists for <coughs> acceptor ionization energy for p type I am talking only of n type here. So donor ionization energy is basically the energy required for the electron to let lose from this phosphorus atom and go and become an n-type you know it contribute to n-type conductivity. So this donor ionization energy I told you is very small typically in the range of or smaller than around thermal energy kt. So that room temperature energy thermal energy kt is sufficient to break this you know bond and make this electron free and go away okay. So the donor ionization energy is typically very very small 
and the spacing and the energy diffusion energy as level is positioned as ed very close to the conduction band it's no that it's basically ec minus ed okay that e donor ionization level is, level is there is very small it's in the range of kt it can be in the for example kt is 0.026 so this can be say 0.010 for example electron volt which is very small this is much smaller than 0.026 room temperature so at room temperature the thermal energy is sufficient to uh, excite the electrons from the donor ionization energy i mean you know this to lose the elect loosen the electron from the host atom actually you can imagine that this donor ionization energy is is also it's a donor level which is filled up with electrons and it's so close to conduction band it's so close to conduction band that the temp the energy 10 milli electron volt is very small with which it is bound so any room temperature fluctuation of energy which exists all the time will be sufficient to excite these electrons up here uh, and so all the electrons will come here right and that's how they populate the conduction band with a lot of electrons and that's uh, that's how conductivity changes and that's how doping actually changes your conductivity or conductance of the material that's why you know semiconductor is very awesome because metals and insulators cannot do that so this donor ionization energy level exists very close to the conduction band fermi level of course uh, can be uh, close to that or even below that for example uh, and then uh, this is the valence band right now we all know these things and the reason i am telling you that this is again because let's zoom it very well so this is conduction band suppose this is valence band this is silicon only okay and suppose this is your fermi level i'm drawing it in a very zoomed way and suppose this is your conduction uh, sorry this is your donor ionization energy level which is say ed of course it will be constant okay there's no slope here my drawing is not very good but you know it's there's no slope here so your what is it called uh, your donor ionization energy level is very close to conduction band very close okay it's close to almost uh, you know less than kt now uh, at room temperature at room temperature i told you that your energy the thermal energy kt is almost equal to 26 milli electron volt and this uh, donor ionization energy i call it ec minus ed this donor ionization energy is say 10 milli electron volt so room temperature energy is sufficient to actually excite the electrons from the donor level to the conduction band that's how you get conductance but the question is what happens this is the important question that we want to answer now what happens uh, you know when uh, for example temperature is cooled down you know temperature is lowered for example or the sample is cooled down so see you see room temperature energy kt uh, becomes 26 milliliton volt and only 300 kelvin but if i go to say 100 kelvin or if i go to say 50 kelvin or 10 kelvin then your kt becomes very small much smaller right because the temperature has reduced no much smaller whereas your ec minus ed this quantity the donor donor ionization energy level actually doesn't change the temperature much so it will always remain at 10 mev so if your kt becomes less much less than you know 10 mev then your room then then, then the temperature the thermal energy at low temperature will be so low that they will not be sufficient to excite the electrons from the donor level to the conduction band what will happen then then the fraction then you know then the fraction of donors that is ionized fraction of donors that is ionized will also reduce will reduce what it means is that what it means is that suppose you know i have a conduction band i have valence band its n type dopes of fermi level is up here and I told you that you know there is a very small you know there, there is a very small difference there is this donor ionization energy level ED. I told you that if I have 10 to the power say 17 phosphorus atoms I am giving then I am expecting to get 10 to the power 17 uh, electrons only. Why? Because all the 10 to the power 17 phosphorus atoms will give electrons here right in the conduction band. Because at room temperature KT is 26 milli electron volt is actually larger than the ionization energy say 10 milli electron volt. But at temperature equal to say 10 kelvin your kt is much lower in that case not all not all 10 to the power 17 uh, you know donors would be able to give electrons which i call donors may not be ionized or will not be ionized okay all the 10 to the power 17 donors that i have added here will not be ionized because the temperature kt has become much smaller and that smaller energy is not sufficient to excite the carriers so the fraction of donors the fraction of donors that is ionized and and that is able to give electrons will reduce with lowering temperature what will also it will result is that your free electron concentration will reduced your free electron concentration will also reduce because your 
uh, number of donor atoms that are ionizing also reduces and why does it happen because your temperature is reducing say 50 kelvin 20 kelvin 10 kelvin so your kt is also decreasing so it doesn't have energy the thermal energy doesn't have energy to actually excite so this process the carriers reducing at lower temperature is called carrier freeze out okay they are freezing out at lower temperature matlab that's what's happening it's carrier freeze out it's basically the lowering of free electron concentration or free hole i mean anything is fine free carrier concentration is getting lowered when your temperature is reduced right when your temperature is reduced then your free carrier concentration is reduced that's called you know it will go exponentially reduction actually it will go exponentially so if i have a uh, the carrier concentration is suppose n i plot on the y axis and suppose on the x axis i have temperature 1 by temperature okay so it's kelvin inverse one by temperature matlab this is very high temperature okay this is lower this is even lower 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 right so at very low temperature okay at very low temperature what will happen very low temperature matlab this region right very low temperature your carrier concentration will reduce as temperature reduces so it will decrease like this and this is by the way log of that so it's a log scale it's a log scale it's linear so exponentially actually it reduces so what's happening is that this is your carrier freeze out that's happening okay carrier uh, freeze out what's happening is that uh, your carrier concentration is reducing with reducing temperature because fewer and fewer carriers are able to get ionized okay fewer and fewer carriers are able to get ionized as you are reducing the temperature okay as you are reducing the temperature fewer and fewer carriers are getting ionized as you are increasing the temperature which means you are coming this side this is increasing temperature right 1 by t this is increasing temperature if you are increasing temperature more and more fraction gets ionized eventually approaching room temperature or even even lower than that what will happen is that all your 100 percent of that will be ionized so it will be flat what is this flat because this is defined by nd the doping that you have given if you have given there is no p type only n type suppose and p type can be talked about separately suppose you have given 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube of dopant to the num this is remember number of free electrons so number of free electron also will be 10 to the power 17 okay number of free electrons will be also 10 to the power 17 that is the number of donors which is this is equal to number of free electrons which is the same 10 to the power 17 so it remains flat okay it remains flat okay it remains flat for a some region of temperature for some range of temperature including room temperature it remains some range of temperature it remains flat okay and this region is called the extrinsic region because this is the region where your number of free carriers decided by the doping density nd so it's flat and you want to operate the device in this regime because here you exactly know the number of free carrier which is equal to nd which you pre-decide so all conductivity resistivity current voltage everything that we have to do in a device we know exactly the carrier concentration here okay lower than that gradually it drops down because the carriers are freezing out they are not able to ionize although the number of doping as 10 to the power 17 or whatever you have kept is fixed but out of this 10 to the power 17 not all 10 to the power 17 are ionizing so the fraction of free carrier available is reducing that's what is happening here okay and as you keep increasing temperature more and more very high what happens is that you have an ni no that intrinsic carrier concentration in silicon is 10 to the power 10 approximately at room temperature at 300 kelvin so that is much lower that is much lower somewhere here right that is much lower but as you uh, increase the temperature your ni has a exponential dependence on eg by kt so as you keep increasing temperature this ni will keep increasing at sufficiently high temperature maybe 5 600 degrees celsius or so in for silicon your ni actually it becomes so high actually ni keeps coming like this from here it will take over it will take over here ni is actually this one it keeps it's very low but with higher temperature ni keeps increasing 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 at some point maybe 5 600 maybe 700 maybe 400 that you can calculate at some temperature degree celsius ni will become so large that it will even more be more than 10 to the 17 or whatever you're doping and it will go crazy high like this it will go exponentially like this this region is called intrinsic region except that in intrinsic region <coughs> excuse me the carrier concentration the intrinsic carrier concentration ni has become too high the too high matlab it's much higher than nd even so that here you know 
uh, at a very high temperature, your carrier concentration has become so high that your sample becomes almost like metallic. It has become too many, it has too much, too many electrons, too many holes. Ni electrons, Ni holes are there. It is much larger than 10 to the power 17, it is almost like metallic, it can carry much higher current and you lose the control of conductivity by doping which is what makes semiconductor very ideal candidate. You want the semiconductor to have conductivity that you define in this region as this one, but if it is higher temperature it will go crazy because Ni has increased. If you go too low also Ni, I mean the Ni is not there, but free carrier will also freeze out. So that is, this is how the temperature versus uh, log plot looks like. So if I can draw it fresh again. So essentially log of n you are plotting right versus 1 by temperature. So at very high temperature this is 1 by temperature so you know this is increasing temperature. Increasing temperature. So at very high temperature it will blow up then it will stay flat eventually it will fall down. This is called freeze out okay region. This is called extrinsic region where the conduct uh, the number of electrons is almost fixed and you want to operate in this regime only and then this is called intrinsic regime okay. Here carrier concentration will go exponentially as Eg bar minus Eg by Kt okay that is what is happening. So you see silicon for example has a band gap of 1.1 so the carrier concentration is 1.5 to 10 to 10 per centimeter cube. Suppose gallium arsenide has a higher band gap it has like 1.4 EV band gap so the carrier concentration is around 10 to the power 8 or 10 to the power 6, I do not remember exactly, it is probably like 10 to the power 6. So you see silicon will basically have, it has a higher intrinsic carrier concentration. So at higher temperature it will blow up even faster. This will withstand little higher temperature. It can withstand till little higher temperature because the carrier concentration is low. So you have to go to a little higher, much higher temperature than this case in order for this to blow up which means because wide band gap material, if you have wide band gap, middle of the band gap is large, I told you in one class that Ni is much smaller there, right, because it goes inversely as band gap, the exponent of that. So you can heat a wider band gap temperature to higher temperature, uh, you can heat up a wide band gap material to a much higher temperature and expect the Ni to remain small. But for small band gap material like silicon or germanium, this Ni is already very large. I mean 10 to the power 10. So if you heat up the material then Ni will become even much more larger. So wide band gap materials can be used for high temperature electronics okay. For if you want to use high temperature electronics you want to measure some something in the fume hood of a missile or a satellite fume with a lot of high temperature 1000 degrees Celsius or any other application industrial automotive vehicle industry where you know 5, 600 or 1000 degrees Celsius processes are there and you want electronics to do some sensing, some measurements and some integrated circuits and so on then high temperature electronics can leave for that you need a material with wider band gap because wider band gap materials will have lower Ni and hence this, this blowing up of the Ni with temperature will be much delayed because smaller band gap material has very high Ni. And so smaller band gap material will quickly exceed this Ni quickly. No, that's why we you go for wider band gap material for high power electron, high temperature electronics like gallium nitride. It has a band gap of 3.4 eV. Silicon carbide. It also has a band gap of around 3.3 eV. So these kind of materials are used for high temperature electronics because they can withstand much higher temperature. Okay. Still, be, the reason is because their Ni is very small. Ni is very small. You want very small Ni. Otherwise, it will blow up. Okay. So that is very important thing that we have studied. So uh, now we have con considered the temperature variation of doping. We have also talked about charge neutrality if you remember. We talked about charge neutrality in the beginning of this lecture. Okay. We talked about charge neutrality uh, right, which is P plus ND plus is equal to N plus Na minus the total negative charge and the total positive charge has to be you know um, equal. right? And then another thing we have talked about is temperature dependence of carrier concentration. Temperature dependence of carrier concentration. How carrier concentration changes with temperature? We talked about that also, right? Of carrier concentration. Okay. So we'll end the lecture here. So these are the two very important things. So in the next class we will talk about um, we'll talk about the following up the, the following up the temperature dependence. What is the next thing? The next thing is actually something called incomplete ionization. Okay. We will quickly touch upon the facts of incomplete ionization. Whatever you are putting need not all get ionized even at room temperature. So how will things look like in incomplete ionization? We will talk about incomplete ionization and then we will move forward to the basic concept of drift, conductivity, diffusion and so on and eventually we will talk about mobility and other things maybe in the subsequent classes. Okay. So thank you for your time and we will meet again for uh, the next class.